Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, V1 Professional Software Training Session. My name is Ryan Burke. I am your West Coast sales rep, uh, as well as a PGA professional. A little background on my aspect, uh, I've been a golf professional for 21 years now, and in the last seven, I have dedicated my life to bridging the gap between technology and our coaches and our players and trying to figure out what, what aspects of all of these different technologies uh, will most put into play for our, uh, for our coaches and our players. So. Uh, some back, background, you know, Blast Motion, K Vest, My Swing. I worked for Mira, a lot of golf technology. So, as you go through this, really uh, pay attention to what we're doing. We're going to do a, a brief overview of what's in the app, kind of what we offer, some best practices. Uh, but in the back of your mind today, really start thinking about well, how does this fit into my program, right? How are my players going to react to what I'm doing? If you're a home user, you know, does this workflow work, right? And if it doesn't, ask the question so that we can tell you, you know, we've thought of many different ways and Will and Jackson here joining us, uh, you know, their background, Will Clark is our customer success manager. He ran golf courses, both public and private for over a dozen years before he came on with V1. Jackson is an accomplished player. He played in co uh, collegiate golf in the Grand Rapids area. Uh, so he knows what it takes to play at a high level. Uh, so, you know, you've got a lot of, a lot of people that have been around this technology and, I think more importantly, we've been around the people that have made this technology successful. You know, we've got hundreds of coaches that have really made this kind of their nucleus of how they build their programs and successfully send and receive videos and annotate. And we know that there's so much going on now. You know, I was hoping we'd be seeing all of you at the PGA show in person, right? We all look forward to that every year. But uh, with that not here, we have to pivot. We'll get back to it. You know, we know the Masters is now going to be uh, limited as well. So there's a lot of disappointment out there. But what we can do today is show you how you can continue to move forward with your academy, find the things that you can really grasp onto. Uh, and for some of you that are already users, maybe you can learn one or two new things today and, and see how that fits in. So uh, I won't ramble much longer. I'd like to send this over to Will and Jackson. They'll get this going. But like I said, please do put as many questions and comments in those boxes as we go. Uh, if we can't get to them uh, today, I will be sending emails, follow-ups. I will provide my contact information following. So, you know, if you just want to call, uh, talk golf technology or you have specific questions around V1's offering, reach out to me. We'll get this going. And, you know, we want to make sure that it's the right fit for each and every one of you. So uh, without further ado, guys, take it away. Thanks, Ryan. Um, yeah, and, and just to double down on the Q&A aspect, we want to take 15, 20 minutes at the end of the session to answer any questions um, that might pertain to kind of the whole group. If anybody has anything they want to go into deeper, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can reach us at customer-success at v1sports.com. I'm sure Jackson or Kelly will throw that in the chat box for you guys. Um, and we'd be happy to talk to you guys further offline if there's anything you want to talk about. Same thing with Ryan, obviously, if you want to talk sales. But um, we'll take some time at the end to answer any questions that you guys might have. So uh, without further ado, let me jump in here. Let me share my screen. Let me know. Jackson, Ryan, you guys see that okay? There we go. Yep, just, just okay. got started there. Cool. All right. So uh, initially what I want to do is I just want to give a brief overview of the interface, right? This is probably more for people that haven't used V1 very much, uh, but it's just a way to, I, I like to start our training sessions this way to make people feel just a little bit more comfortable with what they're looking at on the screen, right? So starting at the top of the screen, uh, we kind of refer to this as the video storage area. So you'll see these top level lines. These are all bins as we call them. Uh, let's see as my circle stops spinning. There we go. But we call these top level lines bins. Let me right click on one of them so you can just see the menu and you'll see it actually says bin at the top left. Good way of thinking of these is these is just folders that house video files. Um, the only thing I really want to point out on the bins is as you do right click one of the bins, you'll see the import option here at the bottom left. So this is how you're actually importing videos from outside of E1. So if you have old content that you want to bring in, or if a student has sent you something, you know, whether it's email or text message, whatever it is, um, this is where you'll come to actually import that, that item. And that's a very common question that we get on the training side. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, the video files. So those are the little blocks that hang below our bins. Um, as you hover over them, you can get quick previews on what they are. Um, the only thing I really want to point out on that section is how to actually assign the video to a different student. So I can right click on the video file itself, or I can come down here to the edit button. Either one's going to open up the video info page. 
Um, and there's really just two things I want to point out, or really three. Uh, there is a lot on the screen here. We do have some launch monitor information, right? We've kind of got the rabbit hole as deep as you want to go with it. But the three main things I like to point out on the video info page, the first being the student. So this is where you can actually assign this video to a different student or a particular student, uh, depending on whether it's already assigned, but that's really important for video organization. Um, the tab ID. So right here where it says AP, you'll notice some of my videos on the top line have numbers and some of them actually have words or letters. Um, this is where you'll actually change that. So if I wanted to change this to virtual, I can say okay and now this video here instead of saying AP is labeled as virtual right so just speaking to all the video organization techniques that you can have with v1 right um, if you're not already aware that's a really important one also in the video info page is the notes section so if you have any notes on this video that you want to leave for yourself something that you can come back to and reference um, you can always throw them in here on the bottom section. So a couple of really useful items there in the video info page and the video storage area. Uh, but really all it is, is video storage. Um, coming over here to the right side of the screen, let me move my zoom controls real quick. But on the right side of the screen here, these are all our tools and features, right? So you have your different lines and circles and squares. I won't bore you guys with how to draw a line or anything like that. But I do wanna touch on some of the main features and functions. So up at the top here, these two buttons. So you have the student button and you also have the globe icon, which is the academy button. These are the two main buttons that you'll live in when you're working with V1. They're very important to kind of the daily usage. Um, the first being the student tab. So let me click on this. This opens up our student database, okay? And this is a very important piece to working with V1. Um, I can hear our vice president in the back of my head right now saying golden rule. And his first golden rule is always to enroll everybody. So no matter how, if you've never met this guy or whatever, enroll your students into V1. Get them in the system so that you can start capturing videos and data on that student. Um, and you'll see on the left here, I have a long list of students that I've already entered. I actually have a virtual summit student here that I'll begin to edit. Um, but on the student tab, so the number one thing is enroll everybody. Um, this, the phone number, so this is a good one. Everybody always asks about the phone number. It's not necessary. It is a one that we recommend though. It's kind of a best practice because if you get the email wrong, which happens from time to time, we can attest to that. I know Jackson can. Uh, and it's always by a character or something. It's a simple mistake. If you put in the phone number, you give yourself that second opportunity or sort of a backup chance to actually deliver that lesson to the student, right? It also goes along with the CRM aspect of our software, right? You can capture a lot of very useful information on the student. <clears throat> so if you don't house all of this information like in an Excel sheet or anything like that, this could become that solution for you. So we could kind of behave as a CRM for you. Um, the only other thing I like to point out on here and it relates to the lessons and, and I'll show you later um, how to use the tags, but you see over here the tags. So this is where I can actually add a tag to this particular student. So in this case, I've already added a virtual tag, but I will add it to this student. If you wanna add one, you just hit edit list and you put in add new and you can add a new tag right here. I did this ahead of time though. So we have a virtual summit tag. But all I do is I click on the virtual tag, say OK, and now you'll see the tag that's listed for that student. I could do multiple tags for one student if I wanted. They could be a part of uh, different groups. But it, by tagging them, you enable the ability to actually tag large groups of people in lessons or, or content that you send out. Um, and I'll get to that when we get to the Academy page here, which is the next uh, button that I want to go through. But the tag system is, is really, it's a, it's a great tip whether you've used V1 for a long time or if you've never used it. It's kind of more of a high level, uh, you know, best practice or tip there. So let me just click save just to make sure I'm saved here. Um, before I move on, the big piece of the puzzle when it comes to the student database is not only are you enrolling everybody, but you got to make sure that you're selecting whoever you're working with as the current student. Right, and I'll show you the two big reasons why you do that. You select current down here at the bottom right. So as soon as I select as current, you'll notice that this top level or this top left bin has switched from no category to the V1 virtual summit bin, right? And so in, when we're talking about video organization, this is enormous, right? So 
This makes it so that all the videos I create after this point are automatically put into that bin for that particular student. And I don't have to go searching through any big library to find the video that I'm looking for, right? So immediately, this should be a best practice as well. One of the first things, and we'll go through this at the end again, but one of the first things you should be doing when you get ready for a lesson is find the student that's coming in for the lesson and select them as current, maybe even before they even get there, right? So then what happens is all of their videos are up here at the top left and you can quickly search through and find the videos you want, bring yourself back up to speed on what you might've been working on the last time that student was in. Um, but it really, it just helps a ton with video organization. The other piece of the puzzle when it comes to the selection of the current student is the lesson recorder will not let you create a lesson until you've told it who it's for. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So let me click on the Academy button. <clears throat> so right now I have a student selected, right? So that's our V1 Virtual Summit student. If I remove this student from this spot right here, which is really just a place to add people that you wanna send the video to, but as soon as I remove it, it says, please select at least one student. Right, so it's stopping me immediately if I don't have a student selected. So that's a big part when you're going to create these lessons for a student, whether it's a remote one or one you're doing in person, you need to be sure that somebody is selected as the current student. Okay, so let me jump out of there and jump back in so you'll see it. So right off the bat, it tells me my student is the V1 Virtual Summit. I have no error warning here to tell me what I need to fix. And, and most importantly, the begin lesson button is blue and ready to go, right? Um, and let me show you this tag system. So here's my tag system. If I click add, right? So just to clarify, this is who I'm sending the lesson to. I click add, I can, I can add individuals that I wanna uh, add to the lesson, right? So I could come through here and look for individuals, or I can click on the three dots here next to the search bar. And that gives me all of my tags, right? So in this case, I'm gonna choose the virtual tag. Again, let me get my zoom controls out of the way. There we go. I choose virtual. It lists all of the people that I have set under the virtual tag. You'll see it's me, Ryan, and Jackson today. Uh, I will actually select all of us, say OK. And now all of us are added to that particular lesson, right? So one of the best ways that I know people uh, or know of our clients who have been using the tag system is let's say you have like a Tuesday or Thursday men's or women's league, right? Uh, and you wanted to send out, you know, one of the guy who I work with, actually, this is what he does is he takes a LPGA or he takes a PGA tour model and he does a lesson out of the model in the morning, right? So this is Thursday morning, sends this as a group lesson to all of the men or women that are a part of that league. And he tags them in the system under, you know, men or women's league. And then he sends this to everybody. And then by the time that group shows up for their, uh, you know, afternoon league, they're talking to them about the lesson. It's, it's spurring more business and conversation. So it really is, and it's a great way to keep in contact with a group as well. So high school coaches, right? Guys that are trying to stay in contact with five to 10, you know, college coaches, Jackson's shaking his head, right? This would be a great tool for that coach to reach out to his whole entire team with some type of feedback or some type of lesson or tip. Uh, let me jump out here, Let's delete these guys. Ryan Jackson, anything to add on that? Any notes there? You know, I, I think this is just an important factor. You know, we're all looking at how we can get media in front of our players and to get this connectiveness. We're not seeing them at the clubhouse like we were before. We're not seeing them there. So, you know, this is an opportunity that's, it's more than just email marketing, right? This is the opportunity for you to spend, you know, 20 minutes on the range coming up with a dedicated lesson that, you know, that appeals to the masses. So we talk about early extension, sway, these things that are are generally happening with all of our players. So if you can if you can create new content, whether that's five or 10 minute video and send this out to them, this is the way for you to stay connected during these times. And, you know, really this is sparking a lot of those reoccurring revenues. The, the coaches that I find that are the most successful take the time to not send it one-to-one, -one, right? Like you, you just created really good content. You took the time to dictate these videos and if you can create an ecosystem where the players are comfortable with sharing their videos, you're going to get a lot more exposure and you're going to find out that content on all of your social media platforms and all that stuff that you just dread trying to come up with is creating itself while you're getting paid. So think about that. Think about how you can get your players to allow you to share some of these success stories with the other people within your, uh, within your academy. Yep, absolutely. Um, okay, so moving along in the academy. So this is that second button just to come back here. So we see where we're, where we're at. 
we had that student button, we're in the academy button and we're looking at this record lesson tab. Um, I'm not gonna bore you with all the tabs, but I do wanna point out a really important one, I think to everybody here at V1, and that is the drills and intro clips. So the drills and intro clips, if people aren't familiar with it, this is definitely a best practice of ours. And really it's one of the more powerful tools that I think V1 offers as a part of their system. So what it is, is you have the ability to add intro clips and drill videos to the lesson videos that you send out, right? So you have your lesson video where you do your analysis and your breakdown of the golf swing. Then you can add an intro clip to the front end of that. So for our academy owners, um, or maybe our country club pros, whatever it is, you can use that business logo as your intro clip. I think I've seen as simple as uh, Jackson, probably the same thing. We've seen as simple as like business card images, right? So the JPEG that you use for your business card, turn that in, 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 into an intro clip, right? Remind them of who you are, how to contact you right before the lesson occurs. The lesson occurs, they do your breakdown in that video, and then you can add a drill video to the back end of that which I think is maybe even more important, right? So you're creating this two or three part uh, lesson that leaves the student with more than just, hey, this is what I see. This is what you should be working on going forward. So kind of speaking to what Ryan's talking about, keeping that conversation going, keeping it sticky with the customer, sticky with the student. Um, so you're giving them something to work on and something to come back and talk to you about. Um, so really it's in, in the amount of drill videos that you can add is really up to you. I've seen, you know, up to a hundred. I mean, I've seen quite a bit of drill videos in there, um, but it's you demonstrating the drill. So these are videos that you're creating outside of V1. So you can actually talk to the customer and demonstrate the drill. And then you can upload those into V1 very simply. You'll see the import content button here. I'm going to click that. You can say browse and it opens up the file explorer on your computer. So the idea is the, the obstacle for you is just getting it onto your computer, which isn't that hard. What ends up becoming the biggest obstacle is actually creating the drill videos, right? So you're taking the time to go outside. Maybe you grab an assistant or, or somebody to come film you. And that ends up being the biggest burden. But getting them into V1 is very quick, very easy. And then at that point, they're immediately accessible when you need them. So you can add them to any, any lessons that you want, uh, wherever it's applicable. Obviously the intro clip might be something that, you know, plays for everybody. Here's my intro clip, obviously the V1 logo, and then I have different drills that I've uploaded into here. So if you're not familiar with this tab, um, look into it a little further, get, you know, think about it, reach out to us, me and Jackson, we're happy to walk you through it. Uh, in fact, I, I don't want to get crazy, but I have, I have offered my services for creating intro clips. Um, it's very simple and easy. If it's something that you need help with, we can either help you do it or we can walk you through it, right? So if you need any help on that, uh, let us know. Um, so that's pretty much it for the Academy button. Um, if you don't know, this is where you can actually also come to download model videos. Um, so if any new models pop out, um, you can search for those people and download them onto your system if they're not already there. All right. Um, I'll come back to this Academy button a little later, but I do want to move on. Let me get the golfer on the screen at least. There we go. Um, so let's see. So moving over into some more of the tools and features here. So the big ones when it comes to V1, in my opinion, are definitely the ability to do comparisons, right? And do overlays. So if you haven't seen it, let me demonstrate what that looks like for you. So we have the ability to show two golfers side by side. Let me get two different golfers um, for comparison purposes, right? So this is where <clears throat> we're doing positional reference against the tour model. Maybe we're comparing the golfer to themselves, right? I think that's also an effective use of the comparison feature is where are you now? How much progress have you made since your first lesson? Is what we're working on working, right? That type of thing. It's a great verification tool to kind of keep the student motivated uh, and going down the line for the vision that you have for his golf swing. Um, the overlay tool. So it's just kind of the cousin of the comparison tool, if you will, but it puts the two golfers right on top of each other, the two images, okay? And what you'll do if it ever looks like this, is you'll control the video that you want to control right here. So this is how you control the different videos if anybody's not familiar with it. Um, and again, if anybody, if any of this is over anybody's head, please reach out. We're happy to hop on a call. We're happy to do a training session. Um, these are some simple things that will really help your business uh, and how you work with V1. So we're happy to show you these controls in, at a different time. But in order to control the video, I just click on the one that I want to control. And then I simply adjust that golfer to where they're on top of the other, right? So I'm using my slide tool, I'm using my zoom tool, 
right? And I'm getting them as close to on top of each other as I possibly can. Now, these are two very different golfers, very different builds. So we're not getting a perfect match, but you can imagine, especially if this was a student of yours, right? And you're putting them against themselves. Um, I think one of my favorite examples of using this tool effectively is for showing progress with things like posture, right? So right now we're looking at Amy and uh, Aaron Wise, I believe, <coughs> uh, right on top of each other. So if we were working on the posture of one golfer and we had them standing up now using their height as opposed to when they were hunched over, when you put them in overlay, that feedback is instantaneous, right? It's not looking left and looking right and deciding whether or not they agree with you or not they can't argue with it because the proof is right there in their face that they're now standing up taller and their posture looks that much better. Right. And so, we'll, yeah. we'll want to add to that too, is, you know, a lot of the coaches, and again, I, I speak um, mostly in reference to the, the top coaches that I've been around and what they use uh, and how they monetize this and how they find those areas. And I would say one of the reoccurring themes that I see with all of the elite coaches is that they have the models that represent the things that they coach. So if you're big on early extension, if you're big on sway, if you, you know if there's these things that you believe uh, impact over the top or slide or sway or early extension or any of these other things, make sure that you have video representations of each of those swings at your disposal uh, so that you're able to pull that up with the side by side and say, hey, here's somebody that was also early extending and this is how we fixed it. So you know, you, you see these and you, there's a lot of different models that you can download, but I, I believe you should start very simple, right? You find those six or eight swings that you can go to and reference every time and you know where it's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And you can speak intelligently to the professional, the amateur model that you're pulling up. Uh, it goes very well. And then also make sure that your camera angles are correct, right? So consistency is everything. So, you know, instead of having to zoom in and move and overlay uh, as you record, make sure that you're pacing off that and making sure those cameras are in the right locations. It'll go a massively far as you start to build your database and your clientele. It's just uh, smoother, easier, simpler, right? There's a lot of tools. Find the ones that work for you and do really good at those, those in particular things. Yeah, absolutely. And there's the, uh, just to piggyback off of that too, if there's models that you find are particularly useful for one student, you have the ability to actually put those models in that student's bin. Right. So if you have a model that works perfectly for Ryan, you can put that model in Ryan's bin and then it makes it easily referenced when it's time to give him a lesson. Right. So it's just another way that the system's kind of helping along with what Ryan's talking about. Uh, let me jump out of the overlay here, get back to just a single video. So I do just want to touch on some other tools and features, go through the video controls. And then if we have time, I'll try to run through a lesson real quick, but we'll, we'll keep some time for Q&A. But um, just highlighting some of the different tools and features here. So um, the text box. So this is a great one. It gives you the ability to put something on the screen that you want to put on, whether it's a motto um, or it's a reminder for that particular golfer, whatever it is. Um, this is great presentation tool, right? So you can put those phrases on the screen. In fact, you can tell it to remember certain phrases. So you'll see my memorized phrases here, you know, head down, wait to left side early, um, you know, things like that high finish, whatever you want to do, you can put that on the screen really easily. You can change the color. Um, you can change the text size, all of that. In fact, I can just adjust it to where I want it to be, right? So it's a great tool, really good visual presentation tool. Um, again, not gonna run you through the circles and stuff, right? It's really simple to draw a circle. Uh, the angle measurement, if anybody's not familiar with it, really good tool. Um, I, I just wanna show you that to show the posture tool. So this is the multiple angle measurement. So this is where we're getting multiple angle measurements in one swipe. Um, so it's a great tool for showing the posture. Uh, let me just demonstrate the clock tool. So this clock tool, this is a great one. I, I really like this, not only if you're looking at a video, but this is great if you're ever on a live uh, video feed, right? So if you're in an academy setting and you have the live video going, you can throw the cam or the clock on the screen uh, while the golfer's standing there, right? So it can be on the screen with no video recorded and you can work on things like length of swing, right? So this is an instant feedback tool where you can put them on the camera and say, hey, take the club to 10 o'clock. And if, you know, especially for your beginners, they're taking it to one o'clock or something like that, right? So this is great for those, uh, you know, beginning golfers looking for that instant feedback on the length of swing. Maybe they're working on pitches, what have you, that type of thing, but great visual tool. Um, you can color code everything, change the thickness of the lines, obviously. I do want to show the key positions, though. So really quickly, we find a video that does not have it. There we go. 
All right, so the key positions, uh, this one does not have it, okay. So let me just show you a video that does have it, right? So you see these eight different swing positions in a grid here at the bottom. They correlate to these different triangles that are on the line of the video, right? So I can quickly take this golfer to the different positions in the golf swing. Um, but what I want to demonstrate for you is how to actually set that up. So if I record a video, unless I'm using a hit mic, right? If anybody out there in the crowd is using a hit mic, they understand uh, what I mean. But if you're not using a hit mic, you're going to have to set the impact, right? So right away, the first thing you should do after you record a video with a student that you want to work with is you should drag this student to impact. So I'm going to get this golfer all the way to impact here. He's about there. And then I'll hit set impact. And what this does is the system takes a guess as to what the other seven positions are, right? I've told it what impact is, and it's going to make its best guess as to what the other seven are. The key, though, is that you can actually customize each position, right? So I can go to position one. That looks fine to me. Position two, not bad. He's kind of rolling his wrist there, Ryan, as you can probably attest, right? He's rolling his wrist in there. But I probably think maybe there's position two. It's a little further along than what I would, than what the system has chosen. So all I do is I drag the golfer to that position, click and hold on position two, and it says new point set, right? So the idea is you can customize all of these positions. If you don't prescribe or subscribe to the eight positions that we've chosen, feel free to change them, right? My best example is uh, I've, I've uh, trained a ski instructor, right? And he's doing the slalom. So he's teaching, he's putting each key position as the turn around the flag, right? So whatever it is for that swing or that player, you can set those key positions up however you like them. And I think that's a big best practice when it comes to V1 is as soon as you record that video, set that impact point. Because now, especially when I go to do a comparison, let me pull up Aaron. He's always a good one. And Aaron's got the point set. So now what I do is I control both videos by clicking that plus symbol and I can quickly walk the golfers through the different positions of the swing, right? Take them back to the top, position two, position three, right? So it's one of the first things you should do after you record a video because it makes it that much easier to navigate. And it really leads to uh, the next few buttons that I wanted to show. So let me jump out of here. And Will, I um, think that's it's, yeah. the good point is it's adding context, right? So anytime you can get context added to the instruction that you're doing, the better off you're gonna be because you you know, as, as good as we are, six months from now, we're not going to know what aspect we were working on. So anytime that you can add more context in these positions, uh, I think go a long way in what we're trying to do. So, you know, focus on, is it going to make sense for me to have these positions six months from now, then, then do it. But if it's not important to you, let's focus on other aspects that are, right? Because this is a very robust system and you can get lost in, you know, too much data and paralysis by, by all this. So make sure you're using it for the right reasons. And I think these positions are super important when it comes to long-term success of an academy, because you just, you're able to pull up these videos very, very quickly and efficiently. For sure. And if I might, I, I hate to point it out as a shortcoming for the mobile side, but this is one of the tools that separates the desktop side from the mobile side. So if anybody's out there who's only using the mobile side and you think this is a tool that you really want to use, reach out to us. We'll get you set up on a trial and, and you can give it a go because I really think it is a powerful tool. <clears throat> um, so thing, moving, oh, hey, yeah. be, be, sorry, just before oh, I good. saw a, a question come across by Rob, when recording a swing with an iPad or iPhone, should it be in portrait mode or landscape mode? Ideally you want to be in portrait mode. So that's, I mean, it's, I'll give it, I'll keep it short too. Just ideally you want it to be in portrait mode. It works either way. It just has to do with when you're sending these videos, whether it's in V1 or not, when they come across a, as landscape, sometimes they can rotate, right? So especially if your students are asking, I think that's a big one, is tell them to record it in portrait because it's more likely to come through the right way. Great point. And it's just, our swing is taller than it is wider. So it's it's just better in, in best practices. So I would say stick to what you know. Same thing with camera angles when you're doing instruction, find what works for you and stick to it. And that's whether you throw down a, you know, throw down a tape measure, um, a yardstick or alignment stick, it is very important to be able to get that close to the same. It'll just save you a lot of time on the back end. Yeah, and we get a question or we get questions about that a lot. In fact, we have a great video on our YouTube page. If anybody hasn't seen it, go to the V1 Sports YouTube page. Great content on there. There's a great Michael Breed video actually talking about consistency uh, in filming. And really, I think that's what it comes down to. And that's what Ryan, I think, was saying is be consistent, right? Whether it's 
four feet back or whatever. I mean, obviously you got to get the swing in the frame of the video, but whatever it is, stay consistent, right? That's going to help you get those consistent filming angles. Um, really, I think the recommendation from us has always been on the hand line, uh, usually about six feet back. So hand height and hand line, usually six feet back, just get them in the frame is what I tell people. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always good to just be consistent. I think that's the main thing. Um, coming down to these effects tools. So there are some great ones in here. I call these kind of eye candy tools, uh, but there are some really good ones. So let me take him back to address here. So there is a swing plane tool, so we can draw it right up the shaft here, and bisect the shoulder, and it'll create a nice shaded area, right? So great eye candy tool for demonstrating. Uh, let me get rid of that. The enhanced or spot zoom tool, right? This is great if you want to check what type of shoes they're wearing, right? Look at their grip, anything like that. Just if you want a closer look, it's a great tool to use, um, whether you're highlighting something in the lesson or just demonstrating something in person. Uh, the enhanced tool, this is great. So this actually brightens the area that you put a square around, right? So you'll see that area gets brightened up nicely. Um, a great tip that a coworker of mine actually showed me a while back was, you can actually brighten up the entire video. So if you want, you can go down to the bottom corner here, do an X over or a square over the entire video and it brightens it up a frame, right? We don't necessarily need that in this particular video, but any of you who are in those bay scenarios, indoor scenarios um, where your lighting is good, but it's maybe not as good as the sun here, um, you could use that tool to brighten up the video kind of one notch or one level, right? So that's a great tool really effective when somebody sends you a video, right? You're consistent with your video, but somebody else might send you something that's not so good. Uh, you got the zoom tools like in the slide tool, like I showed you. The only other one I wanna show you here is the key position button. So this is gonna put those eight key positions on the screen. So as soon as I click this button, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's kind of that golf digest centerfold look, right? From back in the day, it's showing the sequence of that player's swing. Um, Great tool, right? I, I think this is really effective. The ways I've heard of it being used are awesome, like ending a lesson with this on the screen, right? Printing these off and putting them on the wall for each student that he has, right? Or printing them off and just sending them home with the student, right? Give them something tangible to go home with. Um, this is a great option for that. Rather, rather than just one still, you can send them home with eight stills of, of all the key positions in their swing. So a really cool tool. Um, I'll jump out of there and I'll just briefly run over the video uh, controls. Uh, are we good on time, Jackson, Ryan? Where are we at here? Just, my clock yeah, I think we're good. So far, uh, yeah, plenty of time. We've got a few questions. Okay. Some of these will probably go offline. Some of these that are more general, we'll try to catch towards the end, guys. So keep putting your questions in there. Uh, cool. I'm kind of monitoring these as we go. So we've got, we'll get some more there. I know there's some, uh, some questions between mobile and desktop and how that ecosystem works together for those that may want to actually upgrade into uh, both the mobile and the desktop version. I think there's some attendees here that this may be the first time they're seeing the desktop version. So you know how that goes. Everybody kind of goes, wow, this is, this is great, right? <laughs> what the is this? Right, right. Of the desktop so, app is phenomenal. And we, you mentioned it briefly too with the marketing. You know, I think the cheapest and easiest entry into looking really cool if you have a dedicated space is a huge TV on the wall. And so when we see those eight positions of that player and you got a 70 inch TV that only costs you $400, uh, you get a lot of clout within that. You know, that I, I think the one of the first things you see when you go to the Titles Performance Institute in Carlsbad is big TVs on the wall and you see yourself, right? This is the opportunity for us to have our students relate to the education that we know. And so being able to put it up on the big screen, draw a simple line and say, your hips were back this far, now they're here. That's an improvement, right? So we've got to bring it back to our players. And I think that 2D video and high-speed video is, is one of the most important aspects in bridging that gap. So really pay attention to, yes, this is, this is educating myself. This is helping me be a better instructor, but they want to see this and they want to share that. They want to go home. So being able to send these videos in these positions, you know, it, it's, I can't emphasize it enough. Everybody wants to see the improvement over time. Yeah, and I guess I should have prefaced my clock uh, tip with it should be on a big screen TV, right? Those are ideal when you have that TV on the wall right in front of that student so they can quickly look up and rather than walk over to your computer. So great point, Ryan. No, that's a really good, uh, especially in your, your uh, fixed camera settings, your, your uh, desktop settings like we're working on right now. Um, so let me run you through the video controls really quickly. And then if I have time, I'll let Jackson or Ryan give me the green light to at least do like a mock lesson if we can. But let me run you through the video controls here. So on the bottom of the screen, 
you've got a few icons here. On the bottom left, you've got the tempo clock. So that what you'll see is when I click it, I have a little timer up here on the top right. What zero is based on is either position one, if it's set, right? So if I've set my key positions, it will go off of position one. You'll see when I drag it uh, in front of position one, it actually goes into the negative, right? If I don't set the key positions, zero is based off the beginning of the video. Okay, so if you set it to you know position, or if you set the positions, it's only going to be at the very beginning of the swing. And what the tempo clock does is it measures the real time speed that that swing happened, right? So even though I might put this guy in slow forward, and it's going to take 10, 15 seconds for this video to play, it's going to tell me in the top right corner exactly how long it really took him to swing that golf club. Right, so great tool for talking tempo. Um, you'll notice on the tour, it's usually a second and a half to about two seconds. So, I mean, he's right in there. I don't think anybody's gonna be very far outside of that range. Um, but if you look at the model videos, it's great to look at those and watch the tempo and see what they do, as opposed to some of your amateur golfers where the tempo usually isn't as good as the tour players. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, but a great tool, right? So the tempo clock, you can put it on and off the screen with a simple click. Uh, the tool right next to it is the loop tool. <clears throat> Not much to this. It just loops the video. I do just want to detail it though, right? So it just loops that video again. So if you want to keep this thing on the screen while you're talking, maybe, and maybe it's the end of the lesson and you're recapping, um, you can use that loop tool to your, uh, uh, however you'd like. There we go. Uh, well, I would say that I've worked with some, some, uh, some coaches that have used that loop drill. Uh, when you find your player, uh, when you see that breakthrough, when you see the aha moment, you see that, the, you know, they went from way over the top to just a little kick out, or maybe they actually changed that path entirely. Putting this on the loop on the big screen, it helps change those neural pathways. It helps understand what they did, and it gives them the positive reinforcement of over and over and over. Um, I've sent that to my students, and they'll watch that on repeat and say, okay, this is how it's doing. It's very, very uh, beneficial. And I think if you haven't, I think you should give it a try with a couple of your players. I think you'll find that uh, people react really well to seeing that repetition. And rather than seeing a beginning and a stop, seeing a motion can be, uh, can be very, very vital. So give it a shot if you haven't, but you know, it's another, just, it's a great option and feature that you have at your disposal. Yeah, for sure. No, good point. Um, so the tool right next to it. So this is a great one. It's an oldie, but a goodie. It's been around, but it's the flip tool just flips the golfer from a righty to a lefty, right? If you're tired of showing your lefty students, Phil Mickelson for the 1000th time, right? You can flip a righty around and show them from the other side of the golf ball there. Um, the sundial, it looks like a sundial at least. This is one we get asked about a lot in training. So I just wanted to make sure we touched on it today. This is how you adjust the speed of the slow motion, right? And it's not that people don't understand that. The frustration point is usually on, how do I get this clock to move from right all the way to left like that, right? And what happens is, is people try to do the circle, right? They try to do the shape of the actual icon and it actually says it, you can see it on the screen, click and drag left and right. So all I do is I click on it, I go left or I go right, okay? And what that does is I'll throw him in slow forward here is I can really slow this thing down to an absolute creep. Now he's at a very slow forward anyways, but you can see the speed of the green ball I'll even slow him down again. So there you go. I can slow him down a few iotas there, and then I can speed him back up to regular slow motion. So that's how you're adjusting the slow motion speed for each video. Um, obviously, I think everybody kind of knows these, but we have rewind, step reverse, pause, step forward, slow forward, and then just regular playback. Um, before I really move on to, and then obviously the eight key positions, before I move on though, if anybody noticed that um, every time I hover over a button, I'm getting a quick preview of what it is or it's telling me what it is, right? If that's not the case on your system or if you're just starting off with V1 and you wanna make sure that's happening, you see this uh, question mark in the top right, just make sure that that is checked, right? Because if I uncheck it, now I get no preview, no, uh, it doesn't tell me anything when I hover over it. And frankly for me, I've been doing this for a while now, I still keep that checked because it reminds me of exactly the terminology, at least for us trainers, but it also just reminds me of what that tool is if I seldom use it, right? So that's a great one to keep uh, checked for you. Do you guys think I have enough time to run through a quick lesson? Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah, I cool. think we do that. It looks like we've got most of the questions are, are fairly well answered here, but yeah, let's go through a quick lesson. And then if we have time, we'll try to open it up to those questions and those we can't get to, we'll certainly follow up uh, post uh, 
Awesome. Time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll run through an example of a lesson where the student has sent us the video, right? Obviously, we can record videos all day in person and create lessons out of them. But I think to Ryan's point from earlier in the webinar, you know, that's not what we're doing right now, right? We're working remotely. We're trying to find solutions for how to stay in contact and continue our business here in this uh, you know, kind of new world, at least for the time being. So um, in order to, to uh, show this, let me actually choose a different student here. Uh, no, I guess it's fine with virtual student. Okay, we'll stick with virtual student, but let me unselect. So right now I have no student selected. Actually, let me just exit out real quick and I will jump right back in here. There we go. Give me one second. Okay, so this is fresh, right? We just hopped in the system, haven't been doing anything. What do we do? All right, and Ryan just sent me a video via his V1 golf app, right? What I do is I go up to the Academy button I would click this button as soon as it opens up. I would navigate to my inbox. There would be a video waiting here. If I don't see it, I would actually come down to the refresh button, hit the refresh button and any videos that are waiting to come in will come in, right? And if anybody's unfamiliar with the inbox, the only thing to ever remember about the inbox is these are only videos coming from the V1 Golf app, right? So these are only people that you've instructed to connect with you and send videos to this inbox. It helps you in a number of ways. One, it actually puts the videos directly into that student's file. The other is if you don't have a student file for that student or for that person, it'll create a student file for them, right? So it does a lot of the legwork for you, uh, you know, both on the student side and the, and the instructor side. I think it helps with video organization going both ways. But certainly for managing your workload, I, I strongly recommend you have your students send you stuff via V1. Right, it's a free app for them. They can connect with you. They can send you videos back and forth, the whole deal. Um, and it just makes it that much easier for both of you. So you'll come here to the inbox. You'll see this video waiting from Ryan. I would just simply click and say, accept. You'll see it down here on the right. That video would pop over here into the download queue for about two seconds. Um, those of you who are familiar have seen this process, but it downloads for about two seconds. And then it says, ready for analysis. And all I would do is, I'm gonna pretend like Ryan is the virtual summit here. But we go to our student, we come down, we choose Ryan, let's say, say select as current. The video that we just downloaded from that inbox would be sitting here waiting for us. We would just simply select that video. So I'll select this one. Um, <clears throat> so then now what we would do is we do our analysis. We can do comparisons, whatever we wanna do just to get ourselves ready. And then when we're ready to do the lesson, we come up here to the Academy button. And the very first tab, as we went over before, is the record lesson tab. Uh, just for you know practice here, I'm going to add a golfer. I'm going to add Jackson here. Um, again, just to reiterate this too, great tool for like if dad wants the video, right? Or dad and mom want the video or coach wants the video, right? That's a big one we're seeing a lot lately is uh, a lot of our, uh, we have a lot of college users, right? College coaches who use our systems and their students or their players obviously are getting lessons from usually other instructors as well, right? The coaches doing some teaching, but for the most part, they have their private instructors that they work with when they're not at school. Well, it's great during the season for the coach to be able to share those videos with those, those players, teachers back home so that they can offer feedback and stuff like that, especially with your more elite students, right? Uh, but I'm going to add Jackson Bushway. So now I'm sending this to two different people. I'm going to hit begin lesson. And the first thing that you're going to notice is top right corner is this green bar moving. It's an audio meter. It's just detecting your audio. Um, in fact, if anybody's ever had any issues with it, you've noticed that if you don't talk in the first three to five seconds, the system will actually say that it doesn't detect audio. We've built that in so that you don't spend 20 minutes with no microphone uh, talking to yourself, right? So we've built it in so that the system will actually stop you if it doesn't detect your audio. But it's detecting my audio, as you can see with that green meter. It's telling me the countdown timer. I have 30 minutes to conduct the lesson. Uh, everything that I say, draw, bring into the frame is getting recorded. It's essentially a screen recording with a, with a voice recording attached to it. So I can do any comparisons I like. I can bring in any models I like. It's really up to you what you want to do during the lesson. And then once you're ready to, uh, to conclude the lesson, you come back up to the stop sign, click the stop sign. It gives you a few options. Uh, I do just want to point out, this is how you actually pause the lesson. 
So if somebody ever comes into the shop or comes into the business and you need to stop everything, click that stop sign during the lesson, it'll pause. You can always resume or discard if you don't like what you got and you want to start over, but you can resume uh, if you were disturbed and just want to keep going. Otherwise, we're just going to say we're done. <clears throat> we come to this review page here. Let me pause it so it doesn't scream in everybody's ear here. There we go. So it gives you a chance to review the lesson up here at the top so you can listen to yourself, make sure you like what you did for that particular student. Um, and there are some best practices here that I want to talk about as we kind of wrap things up. So when you conclude a lesson, there's a few things that I like to point out to people when we're training. One is this save a copy of the lesson as a tab, this checkbox here. Um, I, I prefer this and I'll explain what it is. And most people, when I explain it, they, they agree. This saves a copy of the lesson, right? And it'll save it as a tab up here in the student's bin, okay? Without that checkbox checked, there will not be a copy of that lesson saved. So for me as an instructor, I'm sure Ryan might agree, I wanna at least keep a copy of that lesson for a little bit, right? So I can reference it, remember what we were working on, if we need to go back to it for whatever reason, I just wanna keep a copy of it to make sure that it also looks and sounds good, right? I'm a little more OCD, so I might check it two or three times even after I send it. But if I don't check that box, there is no copy of that lesson on my system. So for me, I check that and it stays checked once it is. Okay, so you don't need to check it for every lesson. <clears throat> Just check it once and every subsequent lesson after that is gonna have the copy of the lesson saved as a tab. All right, so that's a really big one. Yeah, um, I, I made that mistake initially. So <laughs> just so you guys know, it's really important for me to know what I was talking about in the video that I sent. And if I go back to just a, a clear video, depending on what your lessons look like, you know, you're lost. So make sure to hit that tab every single time because I want to hear what I said to that student, because God knows 10 years ago, I'd be looking at that saying, why did you say that? Right. You're right. always getting better. And there's times when you're like, did I really tell them that before? Cause yeah. Okay. It was recorded. So now let's figure out how to get away from maybe, you know, that, that time. So make sure to hit that tab every time. If you intend to come back to these lessons in the future. And all it does is again, it goes back to what we talked about context. Yep. Anytime you can add context to your videos and your lessons, they make more sense, right? Like we go hiking, we do a hundred pictures of nature. They're not very important until they have context, they have a person in it, something like that. So just really understand that, you know, for me, I don't save videos that aren't going to apply to my later lessons. I want to have, you know, I want to have that first lesson. I want to see the changes. I want to have you dictated and then I want to see what the results were. So how did the story get to where they were at the end of the lesson so that next time I can get there faster? Yep. Um, okay, and then just coming back here, quick tip, this lesson title, it is always going to come through as V1 Pro Analysis. Um, I recommend changing that. It'll help you on your end when you're referencing videos, you'll know exactly what it is. Uh, but it also help the students. So when they're looking at their lessons in the V1 Golf app, it'll tell them what that lesson was, right? It's date and time stamped, but at the same time, it just makes it that much easier for them if you mention something uh, that would reference that lesson, whether they're working on a draw or they're working on their grip or whatever it is, uh, it's going to help them as much as it helps you. Um, the drills and intro clips. So this is the last thing I wanted to show you before we wrap this lesson. Um, this is on the left side here. You'll notice I have V1 logo and I've got the lesson and then I've even got a little placeholder. So what this is, is it's essentially an area to create a playlist. Right, so here's my lesson. I just recorded it with my voiceover. I can add videos. Let me delete this because I, I'll, I'll explain why that was there. But I can add videos by clicking this add button. <clears throat> and what it brings up is a view of those drills and intro clips from my academy, right? So when we were in the academy, we clicked on that tab. There were some videos in there. Well, these are all of those videos. So for me, I want to add a V1 logo. I say add V1 logo, okay. Now my V1 logo is showing up at the top. The reason you saw it was I've actually clicked set as default wrap up in the past. And that remembers any drill or intro clip that you've added to that lesson. And it adds it going forward. So for me, I always want my V1 logo to go out with all of my lessons. So in the past, I added it, clicked set as default wrap up. And that's why you saw that V1 logo showing there automatically. Otherwise, I would add it the same way that I just showed you. Um, let me add a drill as well. So I'll just throw in a toe touch drill. It's actually a baseball drill. That's okay. Um, and now you'll notice that the playlist order is off, right? The logo initially showed up front. That's fine. But the drill I ultimately want on the back end. 
So what I need to do is I click on the video that I want to move. I use the up and down buttons. In this case, I'll use down. And I just simply order the videos in the order that I want them to play for the student, right? So it could be uh, intro clip lesson drill. It could be lesson drill drill. It could be lesson outro, right? We've seen a number of ways that people are using these, uh, but it's really, really effective. I can tell you from um, hearing it myself from different customers, not the instructors, but from the actual students of our instructors, that the drill videos are far and away one of the best things that they uh, receive from their instructors, right? So it's this kind of custom feel to the lesson that they're receiving. Um, I can tell you, as you get better at these two, you uh, find yourself having the ability to create what I like to call one-off drill videos. So drill videos that are specific to that student, right? So you can now get so good that you're saying, hey, Ryan, like I was saying in the lesson, here's this drill that I want you working on, right? So it just adds that extra personal touch um, and really, really uh, creates these professional looking lessons that uh, you can create here in V1. So um, let me send this out though. So I'm gonna say send, it's gonna go out and I'm sure my email will pop off here in about 30 seconds because usually it's pretty quick, but that's a lesson, right? So there you go. So that's how we're receiving a video uh, from the inbox, which is coming from the V1 Golf app. And then we're turning that around as a lesson and sending it to our student and you know, even demonstrating it took 10 minutes, right? It's really quick and easy uh, to turn these things around and continue your business. Uh, and we had a question about uh, adding, you know, adding parents' emails, doing that so that when we come to send this lesson that we do it. And um, I forgive me if I'm wrong, but, you know, I, I think it comes down to, like we said, with context and everything else, when you bring in a new student, you know, you should have the, the information that you need in your, eco, in your golf ecosystem. And that is, you know, who are the parents, who are the contact numbers, who are the emails? Uh, and if you choose to then have the students and the parents involved in the emails, you need to set that up ahead of time. So I always like to have an intro sheet, right? This is a new client. This is all the information I need, not just for V1, but for my Instagram handles and for all the other stuff that you may have there. Get all that information, get it entered into V1 ahead of time. And this ecosystem runs very, very smooth, right? But, you, you know, ask the questions of what do I really need from these people in total? And let's get it on one sheet of paper so that you can be ready to send that uh, post lesson very, very simply. Yep. And just to touch on that, too, if there were any logistical um, questions there, you would actually have to just add mom or dad as a student. And once you've added them as a student, then you could add them to the lessons for whoever. Right. But very good point. I mean, a lot of times check with the parents whether they want the lessons even going to the students uh, email. Right. A lot of times they just want them going to them. But it's a great point. Do a little uh, interview before. Jackson, any questions in there that you see or? Yeah, you know, the, the main one I'm seeing, Will, is um, how do I sync from my mobile to desktop? So did you want to touch on the locker feature or, you know, the cloud? and? Yeah, so yeah, so just in general, right? So the way that these things communicate, they don't automatically sync. I think that's the number one question that we get. Um, and really going back, the answer I've been given since I joined V1 is that you know, we are lucky in the sense that we have so many users, right? And so if every single video that all of our users were creating was syncing automatically, not only would it be a bit of a waste, right? Because I think we can all agree if we take four or five videos in a lesson, we might use one or two. We don't need all four or five to transfer all over the place. And it would just be a staggering amount of cloud storage space that would be required to do that. So I think it was maybe even attempted in the past. I wanna say some certain companies are trying it right now and they're experiencing functionality issues, right? They're experiencing problems with that. So the way that we kind of controlled that in the past or the decision that was made was to make it so that you just have to manually share videos that you wanna share across devices, right? So if you have a video, and this is a common example, you're using your phone or your iPad and you're out on the driving range or you're out on the golf course and now you wanna do your analysis on the desktop that's where you'll utilize the locker, okay? And I don't think we touched too much on it, if at all, but let me show you real quick. So my locker is a tab in the Academy and on the mobile side, it's a, it's a tab as well. It's actually the first tab that you open up to. And for anybody wondering on the mobile side, we're gonna be doing this tomorrow again, uh, 2.30, I believe, Jackson, maybe you could confirm that, throw it in the chat. Okay, it is 2.30 tomorrow, Eastern Standard. Um, we'll be going over the mobile for sure, and we'll touch on this again, but it, 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 it definitely affects both. So let me touch on it here. Um, 
So what you want to do is you want to utilize the locker. A better way of thinking of the locker is it's a cloud storage space. Okay, this is your cloud storage space. So the way clouds work, right, is they allow you to work on documents wherever you are. You can access these documents from, or videos, right? You can access them from the cloud, so you can access them wherever you are. Think of the locker as the exact same way. If you want to work with a video across all devices, you want to share it to your locker. So let me show you on the desktop side. Well, again, we'll show you this tomorrow on the mobile side, but if you wanted to move a video to your locker, all you do is you bring the video up, you come over here to the move button, click move, and you see the options. We can move it to a bin, we can move it to the student's locker, but my academy locker is what you're looking for. Now, you're, not, you're probably not going to see too much, or at least I haven't seen out in the field, people going from desktop to mobile, right? Maybe if you're going out on the road and you want to bring some videos with you, sure. The more common is working from mobile to desktop, right? So... You're not going to use this probably as much on this side, but it looks exactly the same on the mobile. It says upload to my locker, or in this case, move to my locker. What that does is it puts it in the cloud and now it's available anywhere. And let me show you what it would look like. So on the desktop side, it would be available right here at the top of my list for my locker. I would just simply click and download that video and now it's on my system, right? And it takes about less than a minute. So it's about less than a minute on either side, uploading and downloading. So we do require that you take a little bit of a manual step to get that video into the cloud. Um, but besides that, once it's in the locker, it's available anywhere. Hope that answered it, but come tomorrow. Come tomorrow if, uh, if that didn't sufficiently answer. Yeah, and, and for you out there, give it some thought too, right? How are we, how are we evaluating these lessons, right? Most of the coaches that I'm there, we have the big TV on the wall. So there's no use to do anything other than capture the information you want on that iPhone or iPad and then use the desktop app to be able to create that ecosystem. So if you are presenting your lessons in person, you know, that's the best selling point to get the desktop software. It is the, it's the marketing aspect of what you're doing. It's certainly the nuts and bolts of your online lesson uh, ecosystem as well. But uh, give that some thought and understand that, you know what, if I'm a part-time range guy in a part-time dedicated um, uh, location, it, it may be better to have both of those, right? It's just, it's a matter of how you're presenting it to your players. And if you're doing it totally virtually, you know, you can stay with just the, you know, the iPhone or the, the iPad app. But if you are going to do this as a marketing aspect, or you're going to be doing live video annotation in front of the student, um, there are so many benefits you're going to get from this de desktop software. Yeah. And then, and then just to, uh, you know, kind of piggyback off of that, talking about the mobile side, right? Like if you start looking at things like the body track, or the pressure mat rather. So if you're looking at the pressure mat, the ability to go mobile with that mat is in my opinion, one of the biggest selling features of it or one of the biggest features of it period that you can go out on the golf course, see the pressure mapping on you know hills, bunkers, wherever. If you're not using the mobile side of things, you're limited to just using the mat inside, right? So it's just another way that you can expand uh, the data you're capturing, where you're capturing it, and then you can still do your analysis on the desktop side. So you're just kind of using that mobile as a tool uh, to go out there and use it in places other than just in your studio. It's a great point. Jackson, any, uh, any other? As of right now, I think pretty much everybody's good. I know we're running a little short on time. I think we got a minute left. So if you okay. want to push everybody, um, you know, kind of get everything going here. Yeah, so I mean, I'll wrap up for me, Ryan, I'll hand it off to you. But for me, thanks guys for coming. We really appreciate it. Um, obviously, we'll be here tomorrow for the mobile app. Come on through. Uh, I think Jackson's going to jump in and do a little uh, presentation himself. He's becoming kind of the mobile expert here. So that's fantastic. There will be a small giveaway tomorrow as well for anybody that wants to show up. Um, it'll kind of cover both people that were here today uh, and tomorrow. So we'll, if you were here today, you'll be involved in that drawing. Um, and if you want to see the uh, winner announced, show up tomorrow and, and we'll uh, have some fun. Absolutely. I don't really have much to add. I, guys, thank you so much for taking the time. I know, uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff to be looking at. We, I'm glad you're doing the continuing education. Please let us know uh, if there's anything we can do to support you. You know, most of you are already using money of these technologies. So, you know, tell us how we can make it better, how to make it easier. I hope you've got some, uh, some good aspects here. Uh, and we'll work on continued collateral for you as far as, you know, if you have issues with how we just navigated it, we went through it very quickly. So reach out to us, you know, we're here for you. So 
thank you again. We look forward to having you uh, this week and, and some of our seminars in the next uh, next day as well. We've got some great speakers. So if you haven't looked at the lineup, uh, please get out there. We've got some incredible coaches out there that uh, know how to monetize the technology better than anybody. So we look forward to seeing you in the next ones. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.